Hey, what's up guys? Really quick, future Arnold here. You'll notice because I have more hair on my head now than when you guys see the reaction, but uh, I kind of wanted to make an address really quick to kind of explain why this video in particular is coming out so late, especially since it's been uploaded on Patreon, at least the reaction portion has for a while. And I don't know how long this video is gonna be, but this video is most likely a lot shorter than any other reaction video slash discussion video that I've put out for the last two seasons of RVB. So, little annoyed, little peeved, uh, because I initially did this reaction, you guys are gonna see it in a second, I initially did my reactions to episode 17 through 19 a couple of weeks ago, I'm pretty sure you guys are setting a torch to everything that I'm uploading on YouTube that isn't Red vs. Blue, especially since like my Persona 5 videos I think are being uploaded right now, but... I did my reaction to episode 17 through 19. I needed about a week to kind of process and put the episode together. I was a little stressed out. I was a little kind of like overwhelmed with, with everything that that episode in particular put together. So here's the thing. Here's what happened. I did do that. So I watched the episode a week passed. I got back to uh, kind of putting together my notes. I sit down and I talk about the episode for about an hour and a half to two hours long. I have five pages of notes here, okay? One, two, three, four, five pages of notes for this batch of episodes, okay? And I sit down and I talk about the episode in length as I usually do, very impassioned, from the heart, off the top of my head, especially with a lot of things that I'm putting together and bringing to you guys. But I forgot to hit the record button. I sat down for two hours, talked about this entire batch, looked up at OBS, not recording. <laughs> Let me tell you, first of all, that's the first time that's ever happened. And second of all, I was so fucking livid because there's a very small subset of my red versus blue community that I love catering to. And it's the people who enjoy listening to me ramble. It's the people that enjoy listening to me talk at length about everything that I'm putting together for the first time as a first time Red vs. Blue watcher. And I felt so cheated that the episode that gave so much, I flopped on because I forgot to hit record because I thought I hit record. And so the reason why this episode batch is coming out so late is because I've been saying to myself over the last week or so, I'll just record it again. You know, I was like, I'll, 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 I'll sit down and I'll record it again as best as I can. And the more and the longer time went on, the less and less I wanted to do it. Because sitting here for at least two hours takes a lot out of me, especially in the form of, of, of discussing and talking about things at length, putting together theories, connecting dots and all that other stuff. You guys know the deal. We've been doing this for God knows how long. And so the longer time went on, the less and less I wanted to do it. And I just really had to make a break and say, I'm just going to have to be honest and tell them that I did the discussion and it didn't, and I fucked it up because I didn't record. And so I'm going to at least compromise because I want there to be something here for that small subset of viewers. I know majority of people are here for the reaction, but I still want my thoughts to be out there for anyone who wants to know what I thought about X, Y, or Z, what I put together between this batch and the finale and everything else in between. So what I'm going to end up doing at the end of the reaction is I'll just kind of go over quick bullet point thought process of everything that I put together for my notes. It can't be long or lengthy or anything like that just because I just don't have the energy to do that. I kind of put my energy the first time and I'm literally just like, having like a mental, I'm, I'm like mentally fatigued to just thinking about having to do that again. And again, it's just something that I'm trying to cater to, to people who really enjoy hearing my thought process of the episodes. Um, and I know it's kind of a selfish thing to do because I've been holding this batch hostage from it going on YouTube. So overall, it's something that I'm trying to compromise for there to be a thought process there, for there to be something that you guys can take away in the form of a discussion. For those of you who wanna hear um, my overall thoughts of me putting these things together as I'm watching. The the notes are good. The notes are kind of crisp. They're still very fresh in my mind and everything else. It's just the fact that 
that initial discussion is something that was unfortunately lost because I forgot or I didn't know that I wasn't hitting record. I'm recording now, thank God, so I don't have to worry about this portion, but I'm going to try to put something, a little bit of a format together where you guys can overlook my notes and hear my thought process as I'm doing it. It's probably going to be more of a podcast thing than anything. Um, so ultimately, that's the kind of closest thing that I can do in terms of making up for the lack of a major discussion for such a pivotal moment of an episode batch, especially since it wrapped up the, the total it kind of came around full circle with things like the meta and project freelancer closing down and everything else like that so ultimately i hope you guys understand and you know once this is out then the finale can come out and everything else will be as it was with wrapping up season 10 overall but ultimately that's kind of what i wanted to kind of address for for those of you who've been wondering and asking where red versus blue has been it was kind of a struggle because i love doing the discussions and it just felt wrong to upload something that's kind of out of the norm of what I've typically done. But again, it was my fuck up. I do apologize for those of you who really wanted to kind of get that discussion factor um, for this batch in particular, because there was a lot to talk about. But hopefully what I put together at the end uh, suffices enough for those of you who want to get my thoughts and who want to have a discussion on my thoughts, theories, speculations, ideas, and everything else. So ultimately, I'm going to stop rambling now. That's the gist of it. I do hope you guys understand. Uh, enjoy the reaction. The next reaction will be out following this one and uh, should conclude Red vs blue season 10 so thank you so much and enjoy hey guys what's up murder of birds here welcome back to the channel and i am not ready to watch this episode um i haven't felt this nervous in a really really long time um to be honest i have like a really like queasy pain in my stomach and it's because i'm going into the episode this is the second to last batch this is going to be my reactions to red versus blue season 10 episode 17 18 and 19 and next weekend, we'll wrap up the conclusion of season 10 with episodes 20, 21, and 22. And the reason I'm like really nervous and I don't want to watch this episode, <laughs> to be completely honest, is because Epsilon is born, which means Washington dies. Metaphorically speaking, of course, the Washington that we've grown to really know and see the true nature of and have grown to love over the last two seasons is going to die for a more cold-hearted, hardened, and cynical Washington based on being a product of his environment, a product of the director, of Project Freelancer, and of Epsilon's memory. Um, Epsilon was created last week. Uh, we, we, we got the full process of that, of how it happens. Um, we saw alpha go through the torture process that he's been going through time and time again for all of these ai to have been created um we had the fake out match out between carolina and texas carolina is in the hospital recovering sigma is still kind of running rampant with whatever the hell he's planning right now with watching the process of alpha's uh epsilon's birth you know main is still a part of his overall construct of the meta um, this is a 25 minute batch. This is a thick batch and next week's reaction is over 30 minutes. So I really don't know how much they can squeeze into this into this reaction batch of of just giving us as much as possible both for the past and the present. We're slowly but surely getting closer to the director's whereabouts with the present for Carolina and Epsilon. Uh, and in the past, the, the the downfall, the inevitable downfall is is right around the corner. They are, I think at this point, uh, you know, the, 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 the freelancers are going to put two and two together. They're going to want answers. They're going to try to track down the alpha that he's going to be relocated to Sidewinder based on what Texas mentioned in season eight. And and the events of, of Project Freelancer will close and, and Blood Gold Chronicles will take part. I just really don't know what's going to be left off for me in this batch to set up for the finale, which is where the real shit I think is going to really is going to is going to take off. And I, I don't know. I have tissues on standby because the last few batches I've been crying my eyes out and I'm at a, like a level of anxiousness that it's really unsettling for me. I feel like I could cry at any moment. Um, but I do want to say thank you guys very much for 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 tuning in, for staying tuned, for sticking by me through ups and downs, through hiatuses and returns. I know this is a long time coming for a lot of you guys who have enjoyed these videos and I'm just going to see my I'm going to see the, the I'm going to see the friends and the characters that I've grown to love be torn apart and I'm just stalling right now until 
until the inevitable. But thank you guys very much for the support, both on YouTube and on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy these. As always, leave your thoughts in the comments. And without further ado, let's get this over with. All right, guys, um, we're going to be getting into Red vs. Blue Season 10, Episode 17, 18, and 19. I hope you guys enjoy. As always, leave your thoughts in the comments. And we're going to be starting this in three, two, one, now. Hey, Simmons. All right, there yeah. we go. <clears throat> you ever wonder why we're here? We're gonna say this for like the no, third time I mean, this why season. Why would you go through all this trouble just to find one guy? I don't know. He's the director. This is yeah, all about him. This has started since yeah, season one you know about him. All of this, you know? Exactly. The reason that we have to deal with the freelancers and, and the, the AI. AI. And the yep. Meta. I mean, when you think about it, he's the reason why we're here. <laughs> he's a real he's right? not wrong. You know what I mean? Like this goes all the way back to O'Malley in season one. That was based on the director and Project Freelancer and everything. We made it back to base in one piece. Wow. And even found the rest of our team. So do you boys really think running off again will make things any better? No. The way I see it, leaving this place only gonna make worse. Their home. See, and Wash doesn't want that for them, but Carolina doesn't give a shit. <laughs> Shut up, Griff. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, at least Wash is like looking out for them, and I hope he ends up just deciding him, sure, Carolina, and wait. Epsilon no, go. Can't. Carolina, the guys are terrified. And her too. Like point. she's not. Point, she's still not trusting anybody. Psychopath, and you can't be trusted. Exactly. But I know they're wrong. I know why you're doing all of this, and I know you're not really crazy. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Church. You certainly know how to make a girl feel special. <laughs> what I don't know I mean, he's right. You're you like text. super aggro about want. everything. You mentioned her name back on the island. What does Tex have to do with anything? Well, a lot, apparently. Everything! Every what the heck? Up, you like you're to put your fist through something. And then so you do sometimes. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I don't... Look, I understand you're angry. I'm angry too. Yeah. The director's a fucking dickhead, and we're gonna make him pay. But Tex Technically, that friend. makes you a dickhead, Epsilon. <laughs> My friend? Who the hell? Gave you that idea. They were all your friends. She did. Look, she was a total bitch. Trust me, I know. But she told me once she would have given anything to save you. I don't know what she meant exactly, but if wait, you wait, really wait. want to Tex take would do her, anything to save Carolina? You, know, you, you gotta let it go. You say that like I'm sad she's gone, but I'm not. I hate it. York said the same thing. Let compete. go. That doesn't matter. You don't have to anymore. compete. It's in the past. Even she couldn't find the director. Agent Texas, the best of the best. You're so much better than this, Carolina. I know you are. Carolina, if she was really the best, then she would be standing here right Thank now. You, Thank you, church. Thank you. Let go, please. What is that? There are her dog tags. Wash found them in the <gasps> crash. Oh! Texas, where dog the dog tags, tags from her locker? Connie? CT? Like Can you tell me what's on it? Only one way Hello? To find out. Wait, Connie Wait, helped. Not out, Connie helped Tex? Don't bother coming in looking for me. <laughs> Please don't have another season based on him Wait, inside of that go. data unit. Oh my god, Connie helped! She helped the person who eventually was gonna kill her. Agent Texas. <laughs> Fear reading this. Oh my me. god! Or, well, at the very least, I'm probably not around anymore. He is ready. Oh, oh my Maybe god! Epsilon and Wash! Oh I my god, they're the really doing this! About Project Freelancer. I never could shake the feeling that something was wrong with the program. The secrets, the lies, the manipulation. Oh my god, Smoke. she looks oh great god. out of her armor Steering too. a big damn fire. I did some digging and now I know what the director's been hiding. What he did. Sir, Agent Washington. Oh my god! Wash is gonna be changed forever now. Before. I'm taking the originals with me as an insurance policy. I leave this copy for you not because you are the best soldier in the squad, but because I know that I can trust you the most. She knows After who you are and what you are. Why. Good luck. Your friend, Connie. <laughs> Connie, you are the fucking realist. I love you so much. AI experiments, mission logs, personnel files. Wow, oh, Alpha! Dude, this is everything, Beta, that's you! Oh my fucking god, this is it. This is it. 
trust? Ambition? Those are the fragments! Happiness, love! Stop it. Washington! Oh my god! Is that her? Secure him! Get him under control! Washington! Wash! Oh my god! That's Allison! Beta! I'm so sorry, Wash! I'm so sorry! Get him to recover. Yes, sir. Counselor, I'd like to speak with him as soon as he wakes up. Of course, sir. What was that he said about goodbyes? Director? She Director. knows. She knows who she is now. She didn't know before. Carolina? I know where to find him. He her. knows too! How? I just remembered. <gasps> if someone has his memories! <laughs> 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 Dear director, the chairman. The quest for more bases in which to conduct I'm gonna fucking die. Was reviewed Main. With much reservation. The fucking meta symbol. He's Project the meta. He's the meta. He's trusted with one of our military's most valuable assets. Oh my god! He became the meta before Oversight the project failed. A much more difficult process if your operations are not centralized. Nonetheless, we have granted oh, your request. However, we reserve the Main's right to gone already. This approval as we see fit. Main's gone! I sincerely hope this does not happen and anticipate you will not give us an occasion to do so. Wow. Oh my god, that was so much to take in. Wash is Wash is finished. He's changed forever. Epsilon's with him. Main is gone. Sigma took over. The Met is born in that moment. I didn't even fucking hear what the counselor said. I'm so sorry, Wash. But don't say goodbye. I hate goodbyes. Hate goodbyes. Get him to recover. Yes, sir. Counselor, I'd like to speak with him as soon as he wakes up. Of course, sir. What was that he said about goodbyes? <sighs> Director? She knows. Director. She remembers and Epsilon remember. Carolina? I know where to find the director. He's glitching what? out again. Yeah. Why is that happening? I just remembered. Everything. <laughs> Epsilon has his memories back. Dear director. Okay, I need to hear this. Fucking Sigma took over. Your experiments was reviewed with much reservation by our chairperson. Project Freelancer has been entrusted with one of our military's most valuable assets. Oversight becomes a much more difficult process if your operations are not centralized. Is, is this the, the grant of Alpha? Request. However, they gave them the Alpha. They gave them the ability to use an artificial intelligence. That's what it is. And look at Sigma's influence. Oh my fucking god. Oh my fucking god! Main is gone! He's got the meta stability tattoo on the back of his head! We reserve the right to revoke this approval as we see fit. I sincerely hope this does not happen and anticipate you will not give us an occasion to do so. Yeah, come season six, you're gonna regret that, buddy. Oh, oh there you are. He's alive. That's all that matters. Wash is alive. His friends around him. <laughs> slowly. Uh, slowly. How long was I out? Only a few days this he time. He already sounds different. This time? Yeah. This After time? They removed it. Removed they it. removed Epsilon already? It's gone. They're gonna remove all of them. 
It started with you. Yeah, thanks, asshole. The whole process is on hold now. Wow. What Hello, at least he's okay. I'm not giving them up just because he's made a recalculation. You owe me this. Yeah, Alana, you're acting like a Fuck. child. This is not about you. This is about the project. You would be wise to listen to the director. You have to Agent give yours Texas up too. Has already attempted to steal Wyoming's AI unit. What? If she were to come after you. Oh shit! She's she going part. after them. Carolina's had it. Wait. Kind of rough. What did she say? Just considering sending. Carolina, you're acting like a child. Tex this knows now, so she you. went AWOL. This is about the project. You would be wise to listen to the director. Agent Texas has already attempted to steal Wyoming's AI. Gamma. If she were to come after you, then she would get more than she bargained for. <laughs> Carolina's had it. Tex is going rogue. after all of the AI now because she knows the Texas. truth. Hunt her down. She went rogue. Broke out of the facility in order to save her precious AI. No. Later we found Wyoming. Fuck you, South. Apparently you don't even know what's going on. Try to get his equipment too. That hasn't been proven. Besides, Hold on. Okay, I need like I need to shut the rough. fuck up and listen. The director's considering sending her to hunt down Texas. Hunt her down. Hunt her went rogue. Broke out of the facility in order to save her precious AI. A little later, we found Wyoming. Apparently, she tried to steal his AI unit. Tried to get his equipment too. That hasn't been proven. Before the meta Besides, does. That doesn't sound like her. How would you know? Just trust me. I know. And he actually me. talks to her. Done it? There wouldn't have been anything left of Wyoming to find. Exactly. She's, She's monster, the best. North. You guys are giving me a headache. Once they find Texas, they'll bring her back. Texas is gonna find you guys. Exactly. She leads. She fucking breaks in. She brings back into the mother of invention. Great job, York. Oh, thank you, York. I love you so much. I love you so much. You're on her side. Fuck yeah. I need you to find a way to distract them for me. Be careful. Gotcha. She's doing the right thing. Someone I need to see. The director. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god. She's doing what CT was never able to do. Bring justice to Project Freelancer. Oh my fucking god. Tex was the first. She knows the truth now. That's why she's looked at as an enemy. Because the director's in the wrong. And she's going after the AI because... Ultimately, these AI all come from a hole and they're being tortured. So I, I don't know if she's trying to bring them back to Alpha or just get them out of the hands of other people because they're being used and abused. Oh, my fucking God. And York's on her. Dude, that's another reason why I fucking love York so much. York was like a freaking a, a ride or die awesome dude to the very end. Always was on Texas's side. The holographic simulation. But you couldn't figure out how to walk across the canyon to capture our flag. Well, actually, wow. Lopez built it. Okay, now <laughs> also, this is like a throwback to season called, seven. Also, I think. To capture your flag, so you know, suck it, blue. <laughs> oh, yeah, fuck, you guys both kills. Team kills don't count, blue tard. Get hey, relax. Freelancer makes the rules, and I say blue Wait. team gets to add my kill count to theirs. Why are they? Uh, I mean, he's got a lot of kills. We've got big news. <gasps> you wash your taking What? Why are they down the here? I knew it. The writing was all over the wall. Wait! No. It's not here, is it? We found the director. It's yes. not here! You're big again! What is big it better not be you know here, what? Hiding? That's right. He's holed up in one of his off-site storage facilities. Oh! The ones we've seen before. But we have no idea what kind of modifications the director may have made to the compound over the last few years. Oh, wow. Or okay, so back to season security. six locations. Essentially, we need to be ready for anything. So, let's go over the plan. What plan? The plan to take down the director. <gasps> wow, Epsilon uh, is in it. The plan was we help you find the director. Yeah, no. Nope. Now we found him. Well, job, that's it. she's Wait, she's being honest. She's plan like, no, we gotta changed. kill him. So then, what exactly is the plan? Take him down. the facility and neutralize all hostiles. Right. <laughs> What's our plan? Though? That's your plan. <laughs> I'm counting on all of you. But Come you on, the she's worst soldiers you've ever met. You're so the only soldier she has. Look. I just need enough time to make it to the director. So then where's just the distraction? No, Wash, you're on lock duty. I need you with me. Of uh, course, he's got to brush up on his lock picking skills because he's no York. Fuck that. Yeah, 
Carolina, maybe I should stick with the other. Leave others. personnel decisions to me, Agent Washington. Look, wow! Explaining and do something for once. Son, are you forgetting who saved your Holy shit! Down. I can't even yeah, like. There's we'll so much conflict. Oh, boo hoo! Why do you come back when you're on your second or third life? Then we'll compare notes. <laughs> wow! Fuck off, Blue. Jesus. Where do you think you're going? Come on, Griff. We need oh, you. Oh, that's great, Griff. You know, we can always count on you to duck out when there's work to do. Well, you can count me out too. What? What the fuck? Come on, Your stick together. This mission is a lot of fun, but I'm not getting turned into Swiss cheese. Just so the two of you can finish some personal vendetta. Wow. Come on, guys, stick together. Stick together. This is bigger than you guys. Remember what Alpha did. Quiet, dude. This is bullshit. Tucker, be quiet. That's in order. Well, guess what, Psycho? I don't take orders from you anymore. Well, what about now? Don't fucking don't dare. Do that. Exactly. Gosh, Fuck off. What are you doing? Protecting my friends. Thank you. <laughs> You're siding with them. I Gosh, love you understand. so much, Wash. We found the director. We can make him pay. <laughs> Those are his friends now. All I want is for you to leave. Thank Already you. been responsible for enough of their problems in the past, and I'll be damned before I let you cause any more. Thank you so much for sticking up for them, dude. So that's it. You're just gonna turn your back on us. Excellent. He's been used I this entire that. time. You know, I guess I should have seen that one coming. Come no, on, like stop! Concept, is it? That's a little harsh. But you guys, after all the shit you put me through, I really thought at least you would have my back. Us? What the hell did we do? Just shot me through the head. You put a bomb in my gun. This is rampant. This is going rampant. That's just how we met. Oh. Calm down. What's your stop. problem? Stop. 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 You've always been my problem. Each oh, Mecca. One of you is just a problem that I have to deal with on a daily basis. He's, he's engaging. He's giving into Omega. Stop. Please stop. Stop. Dude. Guys. Oh my Guys, god, no come way. on! Caboose. Caboose, please don't leave. Please don't leave. Please don't leave. Please don't leave. Forget it, Church. We don't need them. I don't know what's gotten into you, Carolina. You better figure out the difference. The difference between, between your enemies and your friends. I can't believe this. I can't believe this. We were right at the end. I can't believe this. Intruder alert. Intruder alert. Breach of security. Level zero. It's the resistance. No. No, it's, it's text! And a damn partner in crime. We should get back to the lab. Director, we must follow protocol. Yeah, photo follow protocol me. now. Fuck okay. that. You know what needs to be done. I do. Are you f oh, do it. fuck out of here, dude. You just want them to kill each other. Rematch is really about to happen. You guys are about to get fucked. And I'm on Texas' side. The director's wrong. <laughs> Let's go, Tex! We gotta save him! <laughs> My god, sticky grenades! Oh, the spike grenades, rather. <laughs> My god, my emotions are all over the place this episode. Come on, Tex, I got you got this! <laughs> Yo, get wrecked! <laughs> Boom! No! You think you're so fucking tough, don't you, Tex? No! Well, let me ask no! you. No! Who's the monster now, bitch? Oh, shh. She has to fight the freelancers too. Just clear the room, lads. All clear, clear, sir. Wyoming. Dick Gold is like idiots in studio. <laughs> nice figure, sir. Kiss ass. <sighs> Shut, Shut up. up. Kiss. <laughs> Literally kissing his ass. Knock, knock, mate. Hey. 
Oh, knock, knock, like the Reggie thing. Yo, it just happened! Oh no, they're all fighting each other though. It's York. York who? It's York. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> catch, asshole. Talk about knock knocks. Oh my God, York! I'm so glad you helped out. It. I'm so glad you're just on her side. She's doing the right thing. Ever. Brother versus sister. Hello, ladies. What seems to be the problem? North, you know what the problem is. This bitch stabbed us in the back, and now it's time to return no, the favor. No, no. What side are you on, brother? No. Tex, take a walk. I need to have a little chat with, with your sister. Oh Are my you fucking sure? god. Go. This is a family matter. Are you serious? It got that bad? That's why she killed him. Because it became it became that serious to her where she wanted to fight him. I can't fucking believe this. This is really happening. They're going after the director in the mother of invention? Relax. It's me. <laughs> oh my god. Friendly fire on self. What York, you going on? York, you're doing the right thing. You guys. We are. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Oh my god, is that supposed to be Sheila? Does she reprogram? Oh, never mind. There's people manning it. Fuck. Oh my god, Tex, you're so cool! <laughs> oh, you're fucked, buddy. Hot potato, hot potato! <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Yeah! <laughs> Yo, this is so cool. Oh my god, everything's happening all at the same time! This looks important. Is he gonna take down the ship? Oh fuck, Tex, be careful, please! <laughs> you guys are fucked! Tex is a one-man army! Yo, Delta's gonna help too! I'm so on the freelancer side. Fuck the director. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Gravity ain't disengaged. <laughs> Yo, the OST, I noticed that. Oh, there you go. Nice. Good shit. Are these two gonna eventually come together and fight? Oh. Let's go. Carolina. Oh no, her and York. Let's not do this. Oh my god, please. It doesn't have to be this way. Please, Carolina. What are you doing here? Hear him out. Something her? It's not about her. I'm trying to do the right thing. You should too. I am doing the right thing. No, you think I'm you are. I'm not deserting. She you just wants think to you out are. York. She already went after Wyoming. Is that what they told you? I'm going to stop her. CT said the same I thing. Have to. You don't have to prove anything. Come on. Let's leave this place. We can get your help. We can get those damn things out of your head. You can trust me. Maybe. But you can't trust me. Wow. Thank you! Thank you! Oh my god, you've got to be kidding! Stop! Carolina. Her OST. His lighter! You've got to be kidding. You've got to be kidding! <sighs> I'm sorry, buddy. Herrera. That's where they fucking okay. met. <clears throat> 
I fucking can't right now, dude. I fucking can't right now. These two are gonna fucking kill each other. Are you kidding me? Oh my fucking god, this is it! This is it! It's happening! Ah! Zero gravity, but nonetheless! Oh my god, the glass is gonna fucking shatter! Guys, oh my god, it's gonna crash! It's gonna crash in Sidewinder! Ooh! This is not the time! Get out! You can't win, Carolina, but you can come with me. No. Sidewinder, the ice place where the base is! Did she get ejected? Oh my fucking god, how much time is left? Oh my god, it's like, okay, five minutes. Epsilon Alpha! Hey there. Oh! Oh! oh. 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 <laughs> she found him! You don't know me? Oh, sorry, I'm just, I'm tired. He has no I'm memories. Really um, my name is, uh, Alpha. It's a uh, church. Your name is Alpha. Your church. Oh. Right. Church. That's me. And you are. Let's just say we used to be together. Oh. Oh. Okay. I need you to come with me. Oh, I don't think I can, but I, I think I'm just gonna stay here, you know, and rest. You don't want to leave? Uh, I just I don't think I can. No. Okay. Maybe you just rest then. Yeah, what, what was your name? What was your name? Oh your name again? my god, I'm so sorry, In Alpha. Texas. Texas? Like the state? Yeah. <laughs> funny name for a girl. <laughs> pretty funny name for a guy. Yeah. I guess you're right. You gave me this name, you know. I wonder why I did that. Well, maybe if you think about it, it'll come to you. Oh yeah. my god! Hey, I'm, I'm gonna rest The now. season 8 but finale! Bye. Okay, you rest. Church? Yeah? Goodbye. Huh. I don't know why, but... I hate goodbyes. <sighs> Me too. Okay. See ya. Crazy state name lady. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. Program alpha complete. My heart's so broken right now. I can't even express it. The fucking meta now! Now he's gonna get her to AI! This is what happened, sir. What are you doing? No! Ah! No! Are you kidding? You've gotta be kidding me! Sigma! Meta, you've gotta be kidding! They all just saw what happened! Sigma. DUDE! You run, Agent Texas. We are the Meta. And we will find you very soon. That was everything. <laughs> everything came together. That was everything.
how the meta began, how it started, how it manifested, how Tex went rogue, how the, how the twins ended up fighting together. I was so conflicted with emotion because at one point I'd be laughing, I'd be hyped, I'd be excited. The next minute my heart feels like it's gonna fucking burst. The next minute it's a really tender moment. How is there one batch left? <sighs> Everybody abandoned Epsilon and Carolina. Washington defended the Reds and Blues. Good for him. They're his friends now. I cannot believe this, dude. I cannot believe this. One batch left. How the fuck is it all going to come together? CT. CT. Is the reason why things were set right. It was because of her. Because if it wasn't for that, Maine would have probably killed everybody on that airship. I can't believe this. Now I see why South went to the extent that she did to kill North. Because in her eyes, he betrayed everybody too. The meta is in full effect. I cannot fucking believe that happened dude i cannot believe he just straight up ripped them out of her head and threw her off <gasps> how did you survive If she's in the water, like, she can survive cold water freezing, could preserve her, but she clearly didn't die here, and then Tex runs off, it's another fucking test by the director! Wow. Main's gone too. Ada and Iota were the first. You run, Agent Texas. We are the men, and we will find you very soon. I got nothing. I got nothing else, man. I don't know how this is gonna end. I'm like terrified for how this is gonna end. We saw Alpha has no memories, no recollection of even who he is. He has like no even form of identity. He doesn't even seem recognizable by the time we get to Blood Gulch. At least for Blood Gulch, it seems like he has a semblance of who he is. But at least right now he's finished. I don't know what becomes of him or how he gets transported to Blood Gulch, but... And then the fucking chairman! There's so much to break down and talk about. Holy shit, man. That's it. That's all I have. I gotta talk about the discussion. Thank you guys for watching and... Fuck, there's so much to talk about. Hey guys, remember me? I'm the guy who forgot to make sure that he was hitting record when he was doing his afterthoughts of episodes 17 through 19, and here we are. Unfortunately guys, like I mentioned, this is kind of the closest thing that I can do in terms of a format style of giving you guys my thoughts, my theories, my speculations, my impressions uh, of this batch and having somewhat of a discussion with those of you who are the small subset, but the dedicated and loyal who kind of stick through all of the videos and all of the lengthy amounts of time that it comes down to for me to kind of talk about everything that I put together for an episode batch. This is going to be the, the rapid fire bullet point presentation uh, discussion for episodes 17, 18, and 19. Remember me how I was, change of plans, and party crasher. You guys should be seeing on screen right now my notebook and my notes as I'm going through the discussion. I will make sure to include images and clips as I have been. That's kind of the very least that I can do, but I'm not going to be talking here for over an hour, over two hours, hopefully. Uh, I'm just going to kind of give you guys my thoughts of how the episode kind of went through and everything that I can put together and address in a timely fashion just so I'm not boring anybody and just so I don't fatigue myself because I've done this already. So ultimately, this batch really puts into perspective and puts a full circle on the Project Freelancer timeline 
since all the way in Blood Gulch. Um, the the turnabout of, of Project Freelancer, how it failed, how Allison realized her true identity, Epsilon getting his memories back, really kind of identifying Alpha as Blood, Blood Gulch Chronicles Church, the meta's influence and everything else in between. So starting at the top with episode 17, the director is why we're here. Hey, Simmons. Yeah. You ever wonder why we're here? You mean metaphysically? No. I mean, why are we going through all this trouble just to find one guy? I don't know, he's evil or something? Yeah, but so what? I don't have a problem with him. Yeah, but he's the one that started all of this, you know? He's the reason that we have to deal with the freelancers and the AIs and the meta. I mean, when you think about it, he's the reason why we're here. And I think I've, I, I think I kind of came to that conclusion around season eight or nine, maybe. You know, and I remember back in the day, people used to always tell me when I was first watching the first couple of seasons that I was taking things too seriously, that I was looking too much into things, that I should just enjoy it as it is. And honestly, if I did, I might not have picked up on the fact that the director's story is one that has had it that's had inklings being, uh, you know, put there for us ever since Blood Gold Chronicles, you know, with O'Malley and, you know, with Omega with... O'Malley with him going into Caboose and then and Doc and everything else in between. Tex coming in, you know, the freelancers with Tex and Wyoming. And then eventually we got to get, um, you know, the mini series with Washington and everything. The AI became a major factor with Delta in Out of Mind with York and whatnot. And ultimately the meta was really where the Project Freelancer storyline was taking more of the center focus than anything else in season six. Moving on from that, you know, Connie with the post-mortem effects, her dog tag, and that's something that I mentioned in the last batch's discussion, that I, I was wondering if the dog tag that Wash found was in fact Texas dog tag, but then I was wondering, like, the body crisis. I was like, wait a minute, is, is, the, is the same body that the beta had the same body that the dog tag was found on? Because that body was destroyed in Blood Gulch Chronicles, but then they got new bodies, you know, Texan and Church got new bodies, and that was would have been the body that was found um, in Valhalla. But, you know, looking too much into it, of course, for that, Connie still came through, and, and that level of information is what led to Texas, Washington, and Epsilon all discovering the truth in that sequence of events. You know, Texas in the past, sitting down in, in the classroom and reading over the notes and the logs and the documents that were left over um, by Connie's research of figuring out and kind of putting together the schemes of Project Freelancer. Washington in that same time frame who was being imprinted with all of the torture moments and memories of Allison and, and Alpha and the fragments and everything else like that, and Epsilon in the present with him and Carolina's main goal of tracking down the director and him essentially remembering all of the memories of his lost fragments and, and him kind of becoming the full completed Alpha, the memories of, of Alpha essentially, you know, and, and CT ended up dying for it. Tex eventually went rogue because she realized what, what the project stood for was really on, on the basically on the grounds of, 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 of torture. You know what I mean? Washington played along, made, made sure that no one found out what he knew and never allowed another AI into his head. And Epsilon gained his old memories and, um, seemingly now knows where the director is hiding out. Now, moving on from that, we have the project secrets. And uh, again, this is mainly from the perspective of Texas, uh, her discovering her origins, of, of 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 the beta understanding the entire project's process with alpha the fragments and and her real falsehood as being what everyone dubs her as a shadow washington's mentioned it um you know uh, ct has mentioned it and she's kind of coming to terms with that herself discovering that she is the origins of allison church the shadow the failures of the director's deceased wife and in essence the beta the byproduct of the of the alpha's creation um i think this is also where she's discovering the fate of the alpha and this is kind of what led her to kind of uh take the initiative of leading the break-in that she mentioned back in season six no 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 season eight uh, that she mentioned in season eight of, you know, the Sidewinder mission, her kind of working in tandem with the other freelancers to break him out. And, you know, to a degree that kind of worked because there were some freelancers that, that, you know, that stood by her side and others that, that were against her. And, um, I'm also wondering if Texas, because she is the failure and every action that she has kind of done has led to failure. You know what I mean? Um, I'm wondering if her as a failure is what ultimately led to Project Freelancer failing because only Texas could have done 
everything that happened. You know what I mean? Only Texas could have made so much of an impact. And I feel like it's because she's the failure. You know what I mean? She's the perfect failure for the project and for the director. Um, and it was also really bittersweet to see that Connie considered Texas a friend when Texas is the one who ended up killing her in the first place. So very somber, very bittersweet. And I think, again, it comes around full circle of this is just really a tragic story of, of the freelancers. But more and more, I'm seeing this as a tragic story of the director. You know what I mean? I really want to say that the first 10 seasons is building up to become the director's storyline. You know what I mean? It's not about the reds. It's not about the blues. It's about the director and everything that he's doing that's affecting the universe around him. From there, uh, we actually got a bit of snippets from the uh, from the logs that, that, that Connie left behind, and we got to see the emotional cores and the artificial intelligence matrices that, that kind of pair with them. As always, this is very similar. You know, Leonard Church is the, is the base for the Alpha's creation. We have the failure, which is Beta, Allison, which is the byproduct of the Alpha. We have anger and rage, which is Omega, deceit being Gamma, logic for Delta. I put trust and creativity ambition with an asterisk because that is theta and sigma. And technically you guys spoiled me on that because people were saying that it was confirmed in the red versus blue fan book. Um, you know, the ultimate fan guide and not in the show, which I will give a complete pass on because I've had a lot of collecting, uh, like thought processes and, and, you know, especially with the discussions of knowing that Theta was trust and Sigma was creative ambition. And I'm not going to like, be like, oh my God, guys, you spoiled it. I should have known at this given point because it really didn't amplify anything. If anything, if I had waited to find out now, it would have... I, th there would be nothing to really kind of discuss at this point because, you know, the time for the conversations has already come and gone. So, you know, uh, we, we kind of got the official confirmation of it now. Fear being Ada, memory for Epsilon, happiness for Iota. And then we also got love and greed, which I believe were two AI that maybe got scrapped um, after the project failed or just AI that never got pairings because eventually shit went to shit went to shit. Uh, with the project as a whole. Uh, so moving on to the next page, and this kind of gives us the, the startup of episode 18. At the end of the last episode, Epsilon basically remembers everything, and that's where things get interesting. So we get another memo by the assistant to the Oversight Subcommittee Chairperson, Malcolm Hargrove. Dear Director, your request for more bases in which to conduct your experiments was reviewed with much reservation by our chairperson. Project Freelancer has been entrusted with one of our military's most valuable assets. Oversight becomes a much more difficult process if your operations are not centralized. Nonetheless, we have granted your request. However, we reserve the right to revoke this approval as we see fit. I sincerely hope this does not happen and anticipate you will not give us an occasion to do so. So a couple of things are happening in this clip that I really like. The first of which being the request for more Project Freelancer R&D bases. So the bases that we know and that we see, you know, the different facilities and locations were also assets given to the director by the UNSC. And, you know, essentially they get approved. You know, Project Freelancer already has the smart AI of the alpha. And over time, you know, the, 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 the chairperson was very apprehensive. He was like, hmm, it's going to make our job a lot harder to keep tabs on this alpha AI if the, if the director has all of these other bases that we got to keep tabs on. However, they give him the benefit of the doubt and they allow him to do that. Now, simultaneously to this, uh, to this memo, and this is similar to the, to the chairperson's initial memo, you know what I mean? Seeing um, the memo being given during the moment with, with the Caron Industries members, the irony of this scene is that the meta is simultaneously being born. Sigma has full influence, full control over Maine. Maine, I would say at this point, is officially dead, and his body has now become a husk, a vessel, if you will, uh, for Sigma. Now, the meta is born, and I find this interesting because the meta eventually becomes the reason why Project Freelancer begins being in investigated by the UNSC after the uh, the incident at Outpost 17B uh, during season six from the intro and the first, you know, the, the season six trailer 
end of the first episode so i find it really ironic that like wow they're giving this meta the meta basically his own glow up moment of like oh the meta's born but also in the background you hear you hear the uh you hear malcolm hargrove being like uh we'll revoke these decisions as we see fit we'll give you these bases but if we feel like you're up to something uh we're gonna revoke that and we're gonna we're gonna have some questions for you and it's the meta's fault for all of that happening like the director mentioned <laughs> The prodigal son returns. Agent Main, you have caused quite a few problems for us. You will not be leaving this time. So I found that to be really interesting. And then eventually what happens is there's the, the Meta's cover-up. So I really do think that the director lets all things fly with the Meta. You know what I mean? He He's a very... He's an interesting asset and an interesting level of, of, of ambition uh, for achieving meta stability, for proving that theory correct, and you know, Sigma's ambition is kind of letting him do whatever the hell he wants. And the cover up that he created was that Texas tried to steal Gamma uh, from Wyoming as well as Wyoming's equipment. Now, I fell for that completely during my reaction, that actually went completely over my head. I was thinking like, oh shoot, no, Tex knows the truth. She wants to get all of these AIs so that way they're not like being used for tools of war. But no, like the meta tried to steal Wyoming's, uh, you know, equipment and tried to steal Gamma, which is then a reference to out of mind what Delta mentioned about Gamma ejecting. It was because the meta was after him. What do you think, D? Agent Texas poses a serious risk to any mission. The spontaneous ejection of AI can be catastrophic to the psyche of an agent. She seems okay to me. May I remind you what happened when Program Gamma removed itself from Agent Wyoming? That won't be necessary, D. And one other thing that I will say that I was, that I don't know if I'm confused on it or if it's hard to kind of interpret but why would the ai run away from the meta i i asked that because i'm wondering if it's a if it's a form of like they don't want to lose their sense of identity you know what i mean delta is delta uh gamma is gamma uh omega is omega but if if sigma is going after all of them and making them kind of become this universal hive mind with him in charge i don't even know if sigma's in charge at this point because eventually he would also become that collective mindset of the meta um is that a form of death to them? You know what I mean? Is that a death equivalent? Like we lose our form of self. So in essence, we die. Um, because it seemed like Gamma and Sigma were in cahoots the whole time, especially with tricking Carolina to get to AI. And that might have in turn played a part in why the meta waited for his opportunity to get him from Carolina at the end of these uh, at the end of the batch. So I don't know. It's very up in the air as to why in particular these AI who talk about the alpha and talk about all this other stuff wouldn't want to go along with the plans of one of their big brothers of of becoming united, you know, becoming one and and seeking the the meta as a collective. So just wondering about that. Then we have uh, Washington's condition, which was kind of sparked and put together during uh, episode 17. But basically, uh, Washington kind of went through the, the, the mental torture process of being paired with Epsilon, who was the memories of all of the torture and all of the horrible things that happened to Alpha. And those memories were embedded on him. We got to see Allison's, um, real self, you know, the real Allison for the first time. We got to see flashes here and there of memories and moments between her and I believe the director. And, and, uh, what probably followed from that is the Alpha's torture, the, the fragments is creation and everything else in between. And, you know, due to all of that, the, the project essentially fails. And the first person, of course, who's upset about it is South because she doesn't get her precious AI. It's gone. They're going to remove all of them. It started with you. Yeah, thanks, asshole. The whole process is on hold now. North's armor started the level one distress and they got me here, Stat. Yeah. Level one, South. Something you want to tell me? I'm sure you already know. I need you to confirm it. He still had Theta. Well, I didn't find Theta on him, South. Did you take it? No, I don't have it. Do you still have yours? No, Wash. I never had one. I was in the implant group behind you, remember? And after what happened to you, nobody got any more. But what ends up being really crazy is that eventually, you know, everything is kind of spiraling with, with, with the conspiracy theories of was Texas the one that's going after people's AI? No one knows what the meta's up to. He's just on the ship chilling. And it's essentially Texas versus Project Freelancer and the two major freelancers who have a problem with her, South and Carolina, while York and North were on her side. They're like the best boys. And I, again, I, 
I feel bad that that my discussion, my initial discussion was ruined because I had a lot to say about these two. You know what I mean? They they stuck by her side through thick and thin, especially North, who had a lot of those heart to heart moments with characters when they were going through something here or there, you know, and I was really glad to see that no matter, you know what I mean? Like York and North never really went that far down the deep end, you know? So meanwhile, change of plans are happening in the present. Um, Basically, the plan is shifted to locate the director to now take down the director and it really seems like epsilon is more on board than ever with tracking him down especially after everything that he discovered uh from from connie's data unit so things are immediately falling apart between epsilon uh the reds and the blues uh there has been a constant lack of trust and transparency i would say since carolina went to go to the location of where york ended up dying I thought it was going to be very much the opposite of how things are playing out now with with Epsilon being the one who would mediate and kind of keep Carolina centered on opening up to the Reds and Blues, having them trust her and having her trust them uh, instead of going after the director for a sense of revenge plot and ultimately letting go, doing what, what York kind of told her to. And it seems like, you know what I mean, the Reds and the Blues really have no beef. They really, this isn't their fight, like they said. They've been in the dark for as long as possible, ever since Carolina discovered them and pulled Epsilon out of that memory unit, and they've done what they're told. And now that they're home and they don't want to do what they're told by some person who's trying to pull rank, it's it's really upsetting you know what i mean like it, it could have been hand in hand but the fact that she's trying to just have like this hostile takeover factor just because there's something that she wants and now there's something that epsilon wants because they have this common enemy um i don't know it was it was really upsetting and, and i put it here in my notes that epsilon originally started out more like a sim trooper you know what i mean he feels more like one of the reds and blues during his introduction um you know in season six and now he's slowly becoming more like a he or at least he's having more of the mindset like a freelancer whereas washington who started out as a freelancer is feeling more and more like a sim trooper like the good old reds and blues and i'm so happy that washington defended the reds and blues you know what i mean and ultimately calls them his friends because he's had friends and he's lost those friends and he's been alone and he's had this life of anguish and this life, you know, this empty life, really, because the life that he once had is now gone. And now he has a second shot at life. He has a redemption story. He has new people that he can trust and depend on and people that can trust and depend on him. And I'm so glad that he wasn't letting Carolina get through with any more of her bullshit. Caboose, you realize that when you spy on someone, no one's actually supposed to know that you're spying on them, right? Oh, yeah, I know. I just figured you wouldn't tell anyone. Wait. What makes you think that? Oh, come on, Agent One. I mean, I, you know, I'm pretty sure yeah, we can trust you. I mean, we are friends. Friends. Both of you, be quiet. Dude, this is bullshit. Tucker! Be quiet. That's in order. Well, guess what, Psycho? I don't take orders from you anymore. Well, what about now? Don't do that. Wash, what are you doing? Protecting my friends. Now lower the weapon. You're siding with them? Wash, I don't understand. We found the director. We can make him pay. This is what we wanted. All I want is for you to leave. I've already been responsible for enough of their problems in the past and I'll be damned before I let you cause any more. There was that really crazy scene too where Epsilon invoked rage while he was like fused to the hologram room, which was interesting. And it was just so hard. It was just so sad to see all of them walk away, especially Caboose, especially him, because <sighs> I don't know. I feel like everyone would eventually go on with their lives and, and, and church is the last church is like a respite for Caboose. You know what I mean? And and Caboose not wanting to be there for him was 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 so painful to watch, you know? And um I don't know. It, it was it was a really sentimental moment because they've been through so much together. You know what I mean? Blood Gulch, 
the end of season six, the end of season eight, and where we are now, um, Caboose has always been there for Church and now for Epsilon. And I don't know. It, it, it was just a very heartfelt moment that that really made me feel like, holy shit, what's going to happen now? There were also a couple of references uh, in this batch that I found that were really interesting that mainly focused or were centered around Carolina, which was um, Washington telling her, I don't know what's gotten into you, Carolina, but you need to figure out the difference between your enemies and your friends. Um, Carolina mentioning to watch, leave personal decisions to me, agent, and the lock picking moment. So then where's just the distraction? No, Wash, you're on lock duty. I need you with me. York is still in the infirmary, so Wash, you will have to pull lock picking duty. Yeah, Carolina, maybe I should stick with the leave others. Leave personnel decisions to me, Agent Washington. Will we be the only forces sent out on this mission, sir? Leave personnel decisions to me, Agent. Just do your job. I don't know what's gotten into you, Carolina. You better figure out the difference between your enemies and your friends. I don't know what's gotten into you, Texas, but you better figure out the difference between your enemies and your friends. So shifting to the last episode, we have episode 19. And there is a whole lot of fighting, let me tell you. So my, uh, it's still, it's gonna be really hard for me to try to put together, like, I, I kinda wanna do like my top favorite fights of Red versus Blue, like the first 10 seasons at the very least. Um, and, you know what I mean? Cause it really kind of matters between seasons eight through 10, I think. There's a lot of iconic scenes, a lot of, you know, great moments, especially with Monty's incorporation of his animation, his choreography, his, you know, his animation style overall. I really liked Tex versus the Grunt soldiers as she was going through the Mother of Invention. The spike grenades was a, was a really cool kind of like melee and also a ranged type of weapon that, that really made for a really fun and exciting fight sequence. Um, there was also a song that was playing during that. I got the name of it being Fragments. I'm going to be listening to that song in full in its entirety uh, for the lyrics, especially for the first time when I listened to the season 10 soundtrack down the road. Um, but this this fight really kind of rang true. It had the Monty flair and everything. It reminded me, honestly, it reminded me of a lesser scaled spiral sequence because not the entire fight, but at a certain point, the fight kind of is one entire cut and the camera shifts and circles and spirals a couple of times. And I was like, holy shit, this kind of reminds me of Spiral. It's super cool. The music is in tandem with it, which is really awesome. The choreography is great. You see all these bodies flying, all this explosion stuff and whatnot. And it really makes me miss Monty even more. It makes me miss, miss his level of, of, of coordination and his meticulous execution, you know, for, for how he just had a knack for animation and choreography. And I really wish this style of animation was in more ruby scenes you know a lot let a lot a lot less cuts a lot more fully sequenced fights where the camera does most of the work and the camera can help complement the fights that are happening um it's just something that i really don't see all that often in animation period um and you know what i mean it's it's ultimately a blast from the past because this is old work that i'm seeing now but I don't know. I, I just really wish that this style of animation uh, could have could make a renaissance of some sort, especially with Ruby, because Ruby is the flagship series of the company now. Uh, the next fight that we get is between York and Wyoming, which is essentially a back and forth of of knock knock jokes. I feel like the knock knocks uh, have basically rubbed off on York at this point. And uh, the one thing that I took away from this is that, yeah, York wins this fight but he dies during the rematch years later, you know? And that's obviously a reference to Out of Mind because Wyoming ends up killing York, you know, a stray bullet. And I really do think, again, Tex is kind of the reason for that because she's the failure and the plan that they had went to shit because she's the failure, her gun, cl her gun clip jammed. And, you know, and that was that for her and for, for York. And I don't know, I always felt like Wyoming was a very neutral, a very neutral freelancer, you know what I mean? He didn't have issues or problems with his teammates like Carolina or South did. He wasn't the complete worst of the, br you know, he wasn't the runt of the litter like, like, like Washington. If anything, he kind of kept to himself. He did what he was told and that was that. Maybe that's the reason why things just didn't pan out with him during Project Freelancer because another thing that I'm wondering too is like, why the hell would Wyoming not say, wait a minute, no, the meta actually was trying to steal Gamma from me. Uh, unless he's just in on it, 
You know what I mean? Unless he was supposed to let, or maybe he was planning on letting the meta take Gamma and Gamma was like, fuck this shit, I'm out, you know? But I always just feel like Wyoming was just there as another asset for the director, another asset to let things go under the radar and to not poke his nose into affairs that that the director wanted to play out. Um, I don't know. That's just my take on it. Uh, South, of course, out for blood. You know, she's a backstabbing hypocrite. She goes after her brother and has the audacity to tell him, you know, this bitch backstabbed us and now it's time for payback. Whose side do you on? You know, she's shooting up at, 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 at Texas, which I'm pretty, you know, I mean, it's like, it's Texas. You're not going to get much out of her. And then she ends up going up against her brother, you know, like a family matters moment uh, between her and uh, her brother and Theta. And by the way, North is such a badass dude. Dual wielding snipers. That's all I'm going to say. Dual wielding snipers. That shit's awesome. So uh, another thing that I noticed during this sequence was that the director you know, in an, in an instance to cover his tracks at this point, you know, he, he's canceling the project. He's recalling all of the freelancer AIs and, you know, obviously his, his ultimate goal, his ultimate plan with, with the beta isn't working out. He orders Carolina to kill Tex, just like he ordered Carolina to kill CT. And it's very clear that you can tell where Carolina's priorities are because she was very apprehensive to kill CT going as far as to say she wasn't the best fighter she doesn't have an ai there's no need to ki there's no need to kill her but she's chopping at the bit to have that matchup with tex to prove once and for all who's the better freelancer report it's like you said ct is with them you know what to do i do not need to remind you how valuable our technology is carolina she doesn't have an ai sir and she wasn't exactly the best agent ct will be an acceptable loss but her armor must not fall into the wrong hands. I understand. No, it's Agent Texas and a damn partner in crime. We should get back to the lab. Director, we must follow protocol. Carolina, look at me. You know what needs to be done. I do. Then do it. I decided to put it in my notes for the hell of it, but Tex versus the tank. Uh, I don't know why. I think the, the orchestra of, of Texas theme was really cool during that moment. I mentioned it in my reaction. Uh, also, there was a really funny moment between one of the guys that she was fighting. He was like, Jesus Christ, lady. Oh, Jesus, lady. And uh, it was actually brought to my attention afterwards that the moment where she punches the grenade back at the guy, at one of the, the grunt troopers, um, was actually a reference to Monty doing like a lemon punch, you know, or punching a lemon back at, uh, at an attendee, um, during a, a panel Q and A at, at PAX East 2012, which was pretty cool. I had no idea about that, but, um, it's cool to see like Monty even had like, there was an internal Monty reference in a sequence that Monty himself probably animated. So that was really neat too. So rounding off the, the last page of my notes here, we have the final five or rather the final four sequences that close out this episode that I felt were really worth talking on their own, which is Carolina versus York. I didn't even realize during the reaction, but this was a, this was an incredibly heartbreaking sequence that really goes to show and emphasize what a great guy york was you know as a person as a freelancer as a lover of sorts you know what i mean like he clearly loved and cared deeply for carolina and he really tried to save her you know what he even said to her like i went back and rewatched, and i was like jesus christ this is so sad you don't have to prove anything come on Let's leave this place. We can get your help. We can get those damn things out of your head. You can trust me. And even when he was fighting her, he wasn't trying to be aggressive. He disarmed her and then he just played on defense because she was super, super aggressive and all she wanted to do was focus on, on Texas. She didn't care about anything or anyone. And I would say the cherry on top of their tragic relationship was, and this was something, again, I didn't realize during watching it, this is the last time they ever saw each other. This is the last time they saw each other. Her fighting him and him trying to protect her and trying to save her and going as far as to cut ties off by returning 
his Herrera lighter. And I think that really does solidify York as like a, a great guy. I, I really think I'm going to be rewatching the entirety of Red vs. Blue um, seasons 1 through 10. Um, I don't know if there's more of a story to tell with the freelancers, but at, at some given point, I will be doing my top 10 or like a top video of my favorite freelancers or my favorite moments. But I really think York is going to become my favorite. But yeah, I felt really bad for York. And then when she sees him, you know, when she sees the lighter again, it kind of puts all of that into perspective, which is really sad. I'm sorry, York. Sorry, I didn't listen. Texas versus Carolina was really exciting. Um, it was very short, but sweet. You know what I mean? It was a constant back and forth. I was actually curious. I was like, holy shit, is this it? I almost wish we didn't have like the zero gravity effect just so I can really see them duke it out. Um, but, you know, they were both fighting for different reasons. There was there was different motivations for why both of them were giving it their all. You know what I mean? Uh, Texas for the fact that she knew the truth. She knew what Carolina didn't. And Carolina was driven by vengeance, by ignorance and arrogance to be the best and not really even understand what she was fighting for besides that. You know what I mean? Like, at least from Texas's perspective, Texas probably knew why Carolina was doing all that. She had transparent, you know, she had context and, and Carolina was ultimately doing as she was told. So it, it was a, it was a war. Uh, it was a mental war, but also just one of pride for Carolina. And, and it was very short lived. You know what I mean? I wish I could see like one, I, re I almost do wish that there was a, a, a grudge match between these two because they're, they're the best of the best, you know what I mean? And, and it, ever since their introduction, you know, ever since Carolina's introduction and ever since Texas introduction, I was, I've always been wanting to see like a definitive true, who's the better fisticuffs, you know, who's the better in a one-on-one -on -one scenario with or without AI in mind, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I, I, I do think that they're, they're both great in their own right for what you measure them up to be. And, and it was a great sequence overall, but obviously it was short lived because you got the mother of invention over here crashing into Sidewinder. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, like the last thing you two should be worrying about is fighting. Get out while you can save yourselves. But Rooster Teeth felt the need for one more thing, tugging at the fucking heartstrings, alpha and beta. Soul crushing is the is the best way that I can that I can describe that scene. Absolutely soul crushing to see everything that I knew and hoped and was looking forward to with the alpha when his you know with his official introduction last season to where we now have an alpha with no memories, no emotions, too weak and tired to even to to, to do for himself or even to be able to 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 to, to go into the care of someone else like Texas who found him in that way because of all of the torture, everything that he's been through. And it's it's really cool to see that Texas was the one that reminded him not only of his name, but the fact that they technically used to be together. And I always felt like Texas was the fragment, the only thing that that kept that that the alpha kept um, with him when he went to Blood Gulch. But it, it seems like this little moment here gave gave Church his little semblance of of identity for when Blood Gulch Chronicles rolled around for 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 the person that he says that he is back then and even the fact of mentioning you know he has a he has a girl back home I think he says he has a girl back home or he he has a girlfriend or had a girlfriend and you know Texas was that girlfriend to him um it was it was just a very tragic reversal effect you know because Allison's dead Allison's gone and to her it was almost like watching the director die, you know, an aspect of the director be killed slowly, you know, bit by bit, piece by piece to get whatever he can of his wife back, which is again, it's it's just a, this entire this entire series, just a tragic story of the director. And, you know, they both hate goodbyes. And I can't imagine how many times that's been referenced this season alone or just in general, especially when church freed epsilon text you know what i mean she's like you know don't say goodbyes you know don't you're not gonna say i love you right he's like no i'm not gonna say i love you and then i think she says something along the lines of just don't say goodbye i hate goodbyes and you know you hear it when 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 washington was getting the memories implanted by him you know but don't say goodbye i hate goodbyes and and now they both hate goodbyes because they have to say goodbye to the person that means the most to them. Oh my God. And the final sequence too. I, I honestly want to say it feels like the last sequence here with the meta 
it was like movie quality. It was like those CG, 3D animated CG movies, like Final Fantasy VII Advent Children or some shit. It literally looked like Red vs. Blue attained like an animation, like a feature animation film level of production where everything looked like it was a part of a seat like a movie scene uh that entire sequence was fantastic of of the meta going up to carolina ripping the fucking ai unit out of the back of her head and then throwing her off you know throwing her off to her supposed death and it's crazy that this is being happening to you know that this is happening to her basically from the ai that was meant for her you know what I mean? Sigma was doing that to her, and and that's basically the AI that that was meant for her, which is pretty crazy of a parallel. Um, Carolina death, Carolina's death scene though, it, it, it's very clear now that she did survive. Obviously, she's alive in the present, but the slow motion effect. If you pause at a certain point, what's Carolina always have on her? She always keeps that thing on her, her fucking grapple gun, and that's essentially what saved her from dying. I just want to know what the fuck she's been up to ever since that point where she she cheated death and she's been alive but she's been I guess in hiding all the way up until the point of uh of season 10 you know what I mean like the 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 you know the the moment at the end of season 9 when she comes back and is trying to track down the director I'm like where the hell have you been if you've been alive this whole time uh I also think that's a really cool parallel because this is sidewinder this is the same Sidewinder. This is the Sidewinder that the meta threw Carolina off of that cliff to her death. I believe the same Sidewinder, and I wouldn't be fucking surprised if it's the same location that the meta eventually dies in. But yeah, that parallel was was pretty insane that things really come back around full circle for the meta. You know what I mean? The, the the fact that he popped off here, got rid of one of the best freelancers in the, you know, in the force because, you know, she was kind of weathered down from everything that happened. Got two AI, was on a major power trip following that. You know, the we are the meta moment gives me chills of, of hearing the ambition and hearing the drive that Sigma has. And it's terrifying because, you know, He's good for it. You know when he tells Texas, we're going to come for you. We're going to find you really soon. It's like, it's chilling because it's going to happen whether you like it or not. And I don't know. Uh, Sigma never really came off as a villain to me. It's just the fact that he's, he's, that's, that's just who he is by nature. He's very ambitious and, you know, he's willing to do whatever it takes to achieve his goals, which is insane. But I, I love Sigma. I, I, I loved this entire sequence. It came together quite beautifully. You run, Agent Texas. We are the men. And we will find you very soon. You know, ultimately, those are all of my thoughts. Obviously, it's not as organic as I would have liked it to be. Like I said, that was my fault. I completely fucked up with 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 putting together my thoughts. I really hope to an extent this salvaged attempt at giving you guys something to look forward to, giving you guys something to speculate on or giving you guys something to respond to in the comments for those of you who enjoy this, these discussions. Um, you know, you guys ultimately have seen my notes firsthand and... And, you know, there's, there was a lot to take away. I wish I could be more descriptive or I could be more uh, impassioned about about these moments because a lot of them really, really hit home for me. Um, but I feel like at least on the emotional front, the reaction will suffice for that. 
and this can kind of give you guys like i said a bullet point presentation of my thoughts of everything for this batch but yeah that's everything those are my thoughts theories speculations ideas and my thought process for episode 17 to 19 uh for those of you who are watching this i hope you enjoyed the reaction i hope you guys enjoyed um what whatever you can take away from this I, i'm going to be putting it together as soon as possible and getting it up on the channel because uh this batch of episodes has been long overdue and um for everyone else for who 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 are kind of looking forward to the wrap-up of season 10 i'll be getting the finale reaction episodes 20 to 22 posted a couple of days after this video so it has some time to breathe and marinate and so uh, you know as many people can check it out as possible but again, thank you guys very much. I, again, I hope you guys understand. I hope you guys appreciate uh, the fact that I was trying to put something together for somebody out there who, who wants to listen to this. And um, thank you guys so much for watching and for listening. And I will see you guys all in the last video. Take care.